chapter 6.3 exercise 1 through 10 section 6.3 in our book has to do with parametric equations and we're going to do the odd number problems in the set 1 through 10 in this set of 4 in exercise 1 through 4 match the parametric equations with their graph and so basically it's about entering these equations in our calculator and seeing which of these graphs on the right matches with these each one of these equations so for that we go get a calculator in this case I have a T9 Spire CX graphing calculator and this is a graph page and to get to graph a parametric equation we go to menu and then to three which is graph entry edit and then within this submenu three parametric and here we have x of t equals y of t equals and we need to enter each one of these equation in terms of t and the first one we're going to look at is problem number one which is four cosine cubed t so four cosine and press the trig button t and for this we need to press the cube on the outside so we go to the outside and we go to the power of three so that's four cosine cube t now you notice in the in the problem we had cosine cubed t well it means the whole thing is cubed next we go down to the y equation and to do this we put two cosine cubed t and so two I said cosine I meant to say sine sine t I'm going to put cubed out here and then we check now <clears throat> the standard for parametric equations our calculator is to go from t greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to 6.28 i hope 2.6.28 is reminiscent of something which is essentially 2 pi and so here is our graphed equation our parametric equation so we go back here and it looks like that's option choice b so graph b is our answer to one we we'll go to our next unknown problem which is three and to do that we go back to our graphing calculator and we're just going to enter the parametric equations here I'm going to erase all this. And what we have for number three is two cosine t. For x is two cosine t. And then that's going to be plus two to the cosine. and t and then we're going to raise power here squared so here we square that and then for our y equation I'm going to erase the old one we had here what we have here is 2 sine t plus sine 2 t to sine t plus sine of 2t and we put the 2t inside parentheses here to make sure everything's right press enter and we get this sideways looking heart 
And so we go back to our problems and we look at our option choices. It looks like answer choice A. Graph A. And so I'll leave it to the student to go and check out problems two and four and see which of these other graphs match match them. Maybe necessarily C and D. Next, in exercise five and six, complete the table for parameter equations and plot the corresponding points. Well, for this one, what we're going to do is input t values and fill in this table. And from the filled in table, we're going to complete our graph and sketch it and see what it looks like. So part A is complete the table. So for this x equation, if we put, if t is negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. The next point, if t is negative 1, well, negative 1 plus 2 is going to be 1. And then if t is 0, 0 plus 2 is 2. And so we have a, an ongoing pattern here, 3 and 4. And next we go to the y. We go, if we say y equals 1 plus 3 over t, I'm going to write this below here, y of, of negative 2 is going to be equal to 1 plus 3 over negative 2, which is going to be 1 minus 1.5 or minus one and a half. So we're going to have negative one half. Next for an input of negative one, y sub negative one is going to be equal to one plus three over negative one, which is going to be 1 plus negative 3, which equals negative 2. So we have negative 2. And now for 0, if we plug in 0 for 1 plus 3 over t, well, if we plug in 0 for t, can we divide by 0? No, we cannot in math or in algebra. So this is going to be an undefined. So I'm going to put undef here for undefined. And then y sub 3 is going to be equal to 1 plus 3 over 3, or excuse me, plus 3 over 1, All right? I need to find y sub 1. That's what I need. It's easy to get these things mixed up y plus 3 over 1 equals 1 plus 3 equals 4. So there we have 4. And then finally, y sub 2 equals 1 plus 3 over 2 equals 1 plus 1 1.5 is going to be 2.5 or 2.5. So 2.5. So now plot the points. Part B, we have our that for x equals 0, we have y equals negative 1 half. So 0, negative 1 half, plotting in red here. Then 1, negative 2, so x equals 1, y equals negative 2. And then at 0, we have, we are undefined. So what that is going to be, this is going to represent a discontinuity. Uh, specifically, it's going to be a horizontal asymptote at x equals 2. So, uh, let's go on here. If we have an input of 3, we have an output of 4. So, 3 to the right, 4 up. And then finally, uh, input of 4, output of 2.5. So, x equals 4, y equals 2.5. What we're going to have here is, I don't know if it's easy to see, we're going to have this 
kind of reciprocal function looking thing. Okay, where we approach the uh, vertical asymptote. Then we have on the right side of our discontinuity, we're, we're going like this down to this point here and going to the right like this. And one thing is customary to do in drawing parametric equations is drawing arrows in the direction of increasing t. We can see that these red tipped arrows are essentially done in that manner where we're as time goes that's in the direction of the arrows as time goes forward. And on problem six, just a word of warning, uh, if you're going to be using your calculator for this, you have all these readings here for t are in radians. And what that means is that if your calculator is in degrees, you're going to need to either change your calculator into degrees or understand what they are or or convert these radian measures into degrees, like pi over 2 is 90 degrees and so on. So just a word of warning about problem 6. Now in exercise 7 through 10, graph the parametric equations x equals 3 minus t squared and y equals 2t in the specified parameter interval use the standard viewing window. So essentially what we're doing is we're graphing the same equation for problems 7, 8, 9, and 10 but using a different piece, a different interval to consider in the case of problem 7 between t equals 0 and 10. So we go to our graphing calculator and get a new page here, control I, add graph, we go to menu and we go to 3 and parametric and what we have here for this one is Three minus t squared. Okay, so we have three minus t squared. And then for y, we have two t. So we put in two t here. And then for our domain, our value of t, we're going between 0 and 10. So I'm going to change the 6.28 to 10. And so we graph, and this is what we see. We see a reverse square root function looking graph. And our x-intercept is going to be at, a, at 3, it looks like. Our y-intercept is going to be at about 3.5. So let's go ahead and just kind of sketch this in. So we're going to start here at our x-intercept 3. We're going to go through our y-intercept of about 3.5. So we're going to go like this. And then I'm drawing the arrow to go in direction of time. And that's going to be, may help a little more obvious as we go on to the next problem. Let's go on to problem 9. This time we have the same function, but the time interval between t equals negative 3 and t equals 3. So let's go ahead and look at that. I'm going to go to our tab view and just come up here to our graph. And we're going to use the same function we entered here, except we're going to put t on the left here as greater than or equal to negative 3 but less than or equal to 3. And so here we press enter and we get a starting point down here in quadrant 3. We come up in this direction. So transferring that sketch to our sheet here, we're going to mark our points so and we're going to start about right here and we're going to come 
up here like this. And our arrow, our time arrow is going to go in this direction, which I'm drawing in blue. And you ought to be able to go ahead and work out problems 8 and 10 quite easily. You're just going to get a different piece of this sideways parabola. Good luck on your exercises. Thanks for viewing.